Welcome folks. What I'll be showing you today is uh, how to measure and cut plumbing pipe. The household kind for water supply, be it cold water or hot water. Okay, here we go. What I have in this uh, drill press vise is a short length of old copper tubing. Uh, the inside diameter of these uh, ones that are commonly been around for years is the inside diameter of this pipe here will be about a half an inch. So that's the inside diameter, not the outside. And then uh, the uh, fittings, I have one here. Um, as an example, it's called an elbow. It goes at 90 degrees and it basically just fits on the end of the pipe like so when there's not any burrs or anything holding it up. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'll show you is how to measure it first and then I'll bring in the uh, the tubing cutter and show you how that works with this uh, scrap piece of uh, half inch copper water pipe I have in, in this video today. Alright, so first of all you want to check your pipe, make sure it's not damaged in any way. You don't want anything all bent up like a pretzel or flattened out. You want to have a pipe that's in good condition to start with. Okay, and uh, I'll mention it now. <clears throat> I'll be doing another video and showing you how to solder the joints like the fittings to the pipes. But this, this particular video is going to show you how to measure and uh, cut the pipe to fit into the uh, the part where you want to install this pipe in your house for the most part. Okay, so here we go. So here's your pipe. You've got it, um, a rough length of it. It comes in various lengths and, and hardnesses. I'll mention that too. This one is a rigid pipe. It's, it comes in straight lengths. You can actually buy, I believe it's softer copper and it comes in coils. It's wrapped in coils, like in a round circle. But this is a rigid pipe, so it's a little bit harder. Um, just watch it with copper, it tends to be a lot softer than something like steel, so handle it with care. So here we go, we're going to determine how to measure and, and cut this pipe to length. So once you've determined where it's going to go in the wall, the, between the floor joists, what have you, uh, then it's just a matter of putting the fittings on there and do a, what I call a dry fit before you solder anything together. Make sure everything fits before you actually do the final soldering, that way you know that everything's going to fit in its place where it's intended to go. So first of all, you got to make sure you allow a little extra the, the length of pipe that you're putting there to go into this fitting. Otherwise, you're going to come up short. So here's, I'll just give you a, a brief demonstration. It's just basically put the fitting on there that you're intending to use. They come in T-shapes and you can even get caps to plug a pipe off that you're not using. But just an example here, you put, make sure that that's in all the way, okay? You can actually put a mark on it too. Just get a, a felt pen, whatever you got. I'll make that a little bit bigger. So we'll show up in the video. There we go. So now when I take that off, you can actually see the length that has to go into the fitting. Okay. So always remember that. Keep that in the, the back of your, your mind there. Always remember there's a little extra whenever you're dealing with putting things into fittings as far as trying to make things fit correctly. So there's, there's how much it has to go in. So you have to make that allowance. And the, if it's a straight run of pipe, then you have to make sure that you allow on the other end as well for that fitting. So when you cut this length of pipe, allow for two lengths that go into this fitting. Okay, now on with the cutting part. That's basically what it is just for measuring, is just make sure you've, you've allowed enough there to uh, to make up the pipe you want. And it's not, not a real big deal. If you come up short, you can always cut it off a little bit and then add another section of length, because there's another fitting there. It actually, I'd call it a sleeve, and you can lengthen or join two pieces of pipe together with. So you, you, you never... Uh, really going to waste anything and you can use the shorter bits in the future anyways. So we're going to try to put this thing on about a 45 degree angle and tighten it up in this vise, something to hold on to and then we'll bring in the cutter. Uh, just disregard this mark here, I'm just going to randomly cut it here just to give you an example and a demonstration on how the cutter works. So here's what a tubing cutter looks like and before I get too far along with this, if you don't have one of these, you can still cut this uh, copper uh, plumbing pipe with a hacksaw. It's fairly soft, a lot softer than steel. But here's the intended tool that you want to use. It's got a little cutting wheel, sharp little wheel. It's uh, in many ways, if you've seen a pizza cutting wheel that you use uh, by hand to cut a pizza, it's one of these uh, same kind of wheels, only smaller. And on here you have two rollers and they just fall around the pipe. It's actually this little cutting wheel that cuts the pipe. And then there's a uh, an adjustment knob with the thread on it and that'll either increase or decrease the pressure or make clearance to get around the pipe and then once you get it there. So then what you're trying to do 
is revolve around the pipe, but don't use too much pressure. If you use too much pressure, you end up putting too much of a burr or for forcing the metal in when you get down to the final cutting through of the pipe. So just randomly cutting it here now. Um, you can put it on either way, it doesn't matter. It cuts all the same, but I'll, I'll just put it on this way just for the demonstration. So you just, if you have to get down into it or whatever, make sure it's in between the two rollers. Right down in here, it's like a tripod. The wheel is one part of the tripod. The rollers just basically fall around and apply the pressure to this cutting wheel. So now that we've determined, we've marked and determined the length of pipe that we want to cut for what we're going to be using it for, it's just a matter of setting that cutting wheel on the mark you made, okay, and then just turning it around and around and increase the pressure as you go. You'll, you'll feel it. It's, it's all a feel thing. Um, you'll feel it like if I don't increase pressure on this um, knob that uh, controls the uh, threaded rod that pushes on the rollers, you'll feel the thing going really easy. So I go around a couple times and it's almost doing itself here. It's uh, hardly any resistance. <coughs> Excuse me. So increase it a little bit, go around, and just keep increasing it. You'll feel that, right? You'll feel by the amount of uh, force it takes to turn the thing. Okay. So we just keep going around and around. I'm going to do this, <coughs> excuse me, rather slowly. <coughs> just, <coughs> excuse me, it's a bad day today with my throat. Don't know why, but it just is. And anyways, we just keep going around and around. Let's see if we can center this up a little better. Uh, I guess I could increase the pressure a little bit just to speed the video up. But it's just basically, you can go either direction. It doesn't matter. You can go this way if you want. But actually, this way is actually, you'll feel it's a little bit better because the, the way the tool feels in there, it's breaking through right now. Okay. So there's the piece, and it's cut off like so. Okay, there's an upset edge on the inside. It's actually going to, oh, it'll decrease the flow of water going through here by a little bit if you don't remove what they call a burr. It's the pushed-in part of copper material that gets pushed into the inside diameter of the pipe. Also, if you're having trouble getting your fitting onto the edge of the pipe, you can run a file around it or, or whatever it is if you can't get the fitting on easily enough. Okay, so there's another, another thing to this... Um, this tool, I'll just mention it too. This this particular one is um, good for, well, it says all the way down to an eighth of an inch up to a one and a quarter inch outside diameter of the pipe. Also it's got the metric equivalent here in millimeters, three to thirty two millimeters. And I'll just pull out this um, deburring tool. Okay, it's just a triangular cutting tool if you will. It's fairly sharp on one of the edges. You have to find out which way to turn it, whether it's going to be this way or this way and watch the shavings that come out of the pipe. So you don't want any excess of material inside the pipe. Like I say, that will restrict the flow of water. Okay, so find out which way it goes best and because I'm where I'm at with the overhead camera, I'm just going to do it just there. You can run it. It's better to run it completely around if you can hold the pipe in, in such a manner that you can go all around and, and just find out which way it cuts better. This one feels like it cuts a bit better counterclockwise. But just until you get the burr, so it's, uh, you'll feel it. Just don't get your fingers stuck in there and watch out for the sharp edges. You don't want to cut yourself. You can actually just get something small, um, anything small like a bobby pin or a toothpick or something, and just put it in there and drag it and you'll feel if it, if it resists coming out, you know you've still got a burr in there. Okay, so that's basically it to remove the inside diameter burr in the pipe. Okay? So there's the cutting aspect of it. And while I'm at it, I'll just show you, I do have a smaller one for, for smaller jobs, automotive jobs. I bought this one a while about ago, rather. And it'll go all the way from, um, what does it say, got upside down. 1 8 to 7 8 inch OD of the pipe. That's on the outside diameter. Or the, uh, the metric equivalent is 3 millimeters to 22 millimeters on the outside diameter of the pipe. So that's basically it um, for, for the cutting part of this uh, two-part video, at least if I don't go more, that is. And just set this up where we can see it. There's, there's about it for today, showing you how to measure and cut pipe. Okay, on the follow-up video, I'll show you how to uh, prepare the pipe so that the, the solder joint will be 100% um, strong and dependable. And uh, show you how we... Uh, get the, the solder into these joints and how to clean the pipe up. So there it is, our fictitious pipe here. 
is uh, more or less cut to length and we'll probably use the same piece of pipe in the follow-up video to show you how to solder these things together. Okay, there you have it for today folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Have yourself a nice day and uh, bye for now.